Hi, my loves. It's Daniel Mercurio, and we are in it. The eclipse portal is activated. It is bringing up all the feels, and it is mostly an invitation to go within, to go to the places inside of you that feel unmet, the moments in your life where you were not heard or seen in the ways that you may have needed. This is your opportunity. Eclipses are a period of cleansing, destroying, and releasing. And with that understanding, when we surrender into the portal of the eclipse and we go deep within our own selves, when we are tender, when we are kind, when we are loving, when we make space, we create the opportunity to feel more fulfilled, to feel more in touch, to be more of an ally to our own self so that we can then extend and expand that out into the world. I curated a little bit of channeled insight for you around how to move through this eclipse portal. It will reach its end point over the weekend with the full moon lunar eclipse happening on October 28th. And by November 1st, we should start to feel a little bit more sweetness. Typically, Scorpio has a little bite, but I think she's recognizing that Libra season and relationships and finding balance was a little tricky. And so I believe that as we move into November, as we step out of the eclipse portal, we'll move into softness, fruitfulness, and just a little bit more ease. So enjoy, listen, savor. If it feels good to you, share with others. If you need more support, reach out to me or check out my membership, The Cosmic Channel. I love you. Hi, my loves, it's Daniel Mercurio, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about the period of time that we're in. We are currently in what I like to call the sacred in-between. We are in between a new moon solar eclipse that happened last weekend, and we are gearing up for a lunar full moon eclipse that will be happening next weekend, Saturday, October 28th. And the period in between eclipses can feel tight. It can feel heavy. It can feel like you're depleted. It can make you question who you are. What are you showing up for? It can make you feel like, I just want to destroy everything and start all over. I just want to walk away from it all and start fresh. Or on the flip side, it's like, I want to finally move into this, right? And while all of these things are going on, we're also being faced with a lot of collective trauma. We are looking at the world and it feels defeating. And that can take a toll on us. It can take a toll on us to be exposed to so much technology, so much news, so many resources that are showing us pain, sadness, heartbreak. And so it's up to us during the season to, of course, stay informed. Find moments where you can pray. Find moments where you can share from your heart. Find moments where you can extend love out into the world. However, coinciding that, where are you in all of this? The eclipses are happening in Libra, the season that we're currently in, and then we'll be shifting into Scorpio season. And in Scorpio season, we'll be having the full moon eclipse in Taurus. And all of this is bringing up is reflection around who you are. Your soul came here with an agenda. And part of that agenda was to learn. Part of it was to be challenged. Part of it was to be in conflict, 100%. However, within that agenda was also you coming around and saying, I may have 
experienced and witnessed patterns and conditions in my life that made me abandon myself, that made me experience shame, that made me feel guilty for choosing myself. However, I understand that those moments in time were lessons to provide an opportunity for me to be on the flip side. And the flip side is I choose myself. I navigate the energy and the ways forward of my life with discernment and I trust myself. This is a period of exuding self-trust, of not trusting the opinions of others constantly, of not being like, oh, okay, this is how you feel, that's how I'll feel too. Or this is what you want, this is what I want too. It's heavy, it's not for you anymore. What is for you now is making a choice to be empowered by yourself, making a choice to prioritize who you are. And from that space, you show up. However, because of all the access to energies that we have in our human experience that we know in a way like we've never known before. So we're also navigating that as well. Our nervous system, our human body, our physical presence is witnessing and experiencing things at a pace like never before. And so if that's the case, we also have to make sure that we're making space to regulate, that we're not just constantly reaching for our phone, because every time we reach for our phone, we deplete ourselves a little bit more. Every time that we say yes to someone else, we say no to us. And after a while, that gets really old and it gets really unmanageable and it gets really hard to keep up with the pathway forward. It makes it really hard to continue with your goals. It makes it really hard to figure out what's next. Many of you may be feeling in a place right now where you know you want change. You know you want some things to be different. You know you want to help, but you don't know what to do. And in those moments, we've got to give it up to God. And we've got to give up the phone, give up the distractions, give up the things that are stressing you out, and then go to your God. Go to your God and say, I need help. I need to be shown the way. I'm ready. I'm here. I trust you. And in saying I trust you more than I trust anything else on this earth, on this planet, I'm also making a choice to trust the process, which means I'm making a choice to trust myself. And in order to trust ourselves, we have to go to all the places within us that we mistrusted who we were and who we are. All the moments where we didn't believe in what was possible, the moments that we doubted, the moments that we didn't have faith, the moments that we didn't think that it would be possible because we were too fixated on the outside world that continued to uh, foster and promote our mistrust. Those days are gone. The days of abandoning yourself, the days of not building trust within, uh, the days of not having a true connection with something greater, they can't work anymore. You can't continue to operate trying to appease to the world and neglecting yourself, hoping that somehow something will click and you'll get what you need and you'll be happy and you'll feel good again. It's about making a conscious choice. I choose to feel good today. And even though the world is suffering, even though there is a lot of confusion, I still believe and trust that I am allowed to feel happy today. How can I witness that? How can I experience that? And further from that space, how can I trust that something greater is on board with that too? Your universe, your God is on board with whatever it is that you command, whatever it is that you decide. And so if you decide, I'm going to choose to find a way to be happy in the midst of all of this, that universe, that God, that source is going to find a way to help you with that. But you have to trust. A lot of times it's easy for us once we get into a spiritual path, once we start to awaken, once we become aware of our wounds, of our patterns, we can let go. We can release. And that release can feel sticky. It can feel painful. It can feel awful. We feel it in our physical body. We feel it in our mind. We feel it in our spirit. We feel that like emotional hangover, right? And then things start to get better. And that's where things get awkward most of the time. This is highlighting the moments where you have gotten better, where things have started to progress, and you sabotaged. And you said, ooh, I know that things are getting better. I know things are opening up. I trust the space I made. And yet all of a sudden, now that I'm receiving what it is I want, this feels uncomfortable. This feels awkward. And I don't know if I can trust this. And that's the real work. 
right? The work is, of course, to become aware, to awaken. And for many of you that are listening, you're already in that point. You're in that point where you've see, received res- support, where you've done therapy, where you've you know moved through a lot of difficult things in your life. And that's beautiful. And I commend you for it. And now you're in the next initi- initiation, which is what do I do with this space that I made? What do I do with this space that I created? Am I going to let it get filled back up with the chaos of the world, with feeling like I'm not good enough, with feeling confused, with feeling like I don't matter? Or am I going to fill it up with the energetics of joy, happiness, abundance, trusting that everything is going to be okay, trusting that you still deserve good things in the midst of things that don't seem so good? And when we start to participate in that, when we start to become comfortable with receiving, then we grow and we elevate. So right now, any blind spot that you have around receiving is being exposed. And most likely it's connected to something within yourself that you don't trust, something within yourself that you're scared of, something within yourself of if I don't you know, do this, or, or if I let this person go, if I let that situation leave, if I go over here, I won't have it again. But what you had that you want to let go of wasn't that great or else you wouldn't be having the thoughts of letting it go. And so what does it feel like to be able to receive more? What does it feel like to be in a space where you have capacity for the things that you want and you don't have to give them away? We work so often off of a a rewards and punishment system. And so, so often we get to a place where we've released and now we're rewarded with this new space we created, but then good stuff starts happening and we don't feel worthy of it. We don't feel deserving, or we're just used to when good things happen, they fall apart. When I'm happy, I eventually will be punished for it. We're leaving those templates behind. You do not need to punish yourself for being in a space where things are getting better. There will be moments where you'll be challenged. That doesn't mean it all has to go away. It doesn't mean that it's all falling apart. If anything, it's just a little bit of a test to just show you, you know, like, hey, try this out, move through this. You got this, right? And so in this sacred in between, you may be feeling tired. You may be feeling defeated. I encourage you to notice where you're spending your time, to notice how much you're engaging with your phone, to notice where you're giving your power away, to notice how much you're taking on, because we're taking on more than we realize. And so we've got to clear from that space. We've got to take a step back and ask ourselves, where am I prioritizing myself in all of this? Because I still deserve that. We all still deserve to prioritize ourselves because we're all we got. And then from that space, start to recalibrate, start to become comfortable to feel neutral. Neutrality is a weird thing because so often we're we're used to really big highs or really big lows. So if we're in that neutral space, it feels weird because we're like, ooh, everything is steady. Everything is okay. I need to either chase and try to find something higher or I need to sabotage and go back down to a lower state. However, if you can find peace within the neutral space, if you can be present in this moment, if you can just be with who you are as you are in this moment, then eventually that steadiness starts to rise. It starts to elevate and we become comfortable with a new level, a new flow, and we can receive from there. And then we jump up again and we can receive from there. And we have to remember and we have to be mindful in those moments of, oh, I want to punish myself. I want to sabotage. I want to take it away. I want to feel pain. But that is not your reality. That is not your operating system. That is not how you move going forward. And when you trust that, then you reroute and you get up a little bit higher. I promise you, you didn't come here to suffer. There is suffering in the world. That doesn't mean that it's yours. What it means is is you get to a place of peace. You trust your awakening. And then from that place, you get on your knees and you pray. You, You show up for your neighbors. You bring peace and harmony into your community. That's how we create a ripple effect. Okay? So in this sacred in between, a lot is being witnessed. A lot is being felt. Be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't push yourself more than you want to be pushed. Okay. Rest as you need to, but rest can mean a lot of different things. It can mean going for a walk in nature, spending some time with your kids, your dog, uh, you know, uh, going to a coffee shop and just sitting with your cup of coffee. 
okay? There's a lot of different ways to do that. Write, journal, work on a passion project. That's also considered rest, creativity, okay? These are all aspects that are allowing you to get away from that manic, like hyper-masculine that we're in right now and start to move and soften into the feminine. This is a softening, okay? And a lot is gonna release when we have that full moon lunar eclipse on Saturday. It's happening in Taurus. I was telling uh, my friend last night, you know, leading up to a full moon lunar eclipse, it's kind of like that feeling of like when you when you start to get a pimple. Like, you know that feeling where, like a big one, right? Like the, one of those big nasty red ones. And you can start to feel it kind of like coming together under the surface of your skin and you can you know you do a little bit you exfoliate you cleanse you do you know whatever you do that's unique to you for pimples and you try to like see if you can minimize it but it just keeps coming through and it just keeps growing and it starts to push past the pores and it starts to open up and it's this big red gnarly thing and you try to like push it and, and get the gunk out but it just doesn't want to get out that's what's happening right now as the full moon uh, starts to grow as the moon the moon right now is waxing so as the moon is waxing as it's growing as it's building as it's leaning into this lunar eclipse that will happen next saturday uh it's getting bigger and bigger and more red and and a little bit painful and you don't really like touching it and you don't really like how it looks and you're trying to avoid it but it just won't go away and then all of a sudden that full moon happens and guess what it's in a place where boop you can pop it you can pop it and all that gunk comes out and it's gross and it's messy and you wipe it away and you give it a day and then next thing you know, it's like hardly there. It was like it didn't even exist. That's our pain, that's our wounds, right? So often when uh, we're working with the moon faces, that's what's happening. The moon is pulling all that old stuff that we've been holding on to. And a lot of times when it's uh, evacuating, when it's being evicted, we feel that pain through our body. That's why it feels uncomfortable. It feels like, wait, what am I doing wrong here? If anything, you're doing things that are right because you're allowing that energy to release. You're allowing it to be evicted. You're allowing it to evacuate, right? But if you suppress it and you try to push it back down, you're saying, I want to keep this pain. I want to hold on to it. I need it more, but you don't need it. So let it release. Let your body do its thing. Let the energy speak on your behalf and allow the things that you no longer uh, want, that you no longer desire, that no longer serve you, be risen to the surface and evacuate it. Okay, let it rupture, let it burst, let it pop. Let it be messy and gross because that's what's been living inside of you and your body's like, no, we got to clear this out. This isn't healthy. So that's kind of what we're feeling right now. We're feeling that like sore, raw pimple that is forming with the knowing though when that full moon comes, poop, it's going to pop and with it is all that old shit that you don't need anymore. And then from that, we make space and then be in that neutral space for a little bit more. Okay, I think things are going to turn in November for us. We'll move into the Ascension Portal 1111, and that's our opportunity to rise. So don't use this period as a period to be like, this is my moment to rise. This is my moment to shine. This is my moment to push myself. This is my moment to elevate. This is my moment to raise all these frequencies. No, this is your moment to sit with the areas of your life that you're noticing self-abandon, to sit with the areas of your life where you're still holding on to shame, to sit with the areas of your life where you are constantly reaching for outside distractions that are hijacking your nervous system, to notice all of that, to evoke rest, play, ease, embrace the season that you're in, embrace the community that you live in, embrace the foods that are ripe right now. Let nature help you. Let yourself be in a healing receiving space. And then on the flip side of this full moon, with this new open existence that you're in as we move deeper into November, then start to get on board with receiving. And as you receive, know that you deserve this. This is delicious. This is exactly what you need. This is nutritious. You're sipping it in. You're letting all the good nutrients absorb in your being. You're letting yourself have it. And then you get to have more. And then that builds upon that and that builds upon that. So essentially in the sacred in between, it's an opportunity to be gentle with yourself. It's an opportunity to get to know yourself on a deeper level. It's an opportunity to make room for the release. And if anything, it's an opportunity to manage and notice your patterns, your habits, the ways that you're reaching for things, the ways that you're letting other energy impact. And then lastly, it's an opportunity to uh, show up with your heart, to give love, to pray for peace, to evoke harmony and to make a practice out of that as well. I love you. If you need any help, 
please reach out to me. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one support through my astrology sessions. I also have a membership, the Cosmic Channel, where we navigate all of these energies and I give you the tools and the resources that you need to keep going in these times. Again, I love you. Share this with anybody who needs to hear it too.